Hi there. Welcome to this lesson on Pure Mathematics 3. And in this lesson, we're looking at the trigonometric double angle formulae. Now, we're already familiar with the addition formulae from the last lesson, and it's very easy to use those to derive the double angle formulae. So the addition formulae are sine A plus B is equal to sine A cos B plus cos A sine B. Cos A plus B is equal to cos A cos B, take away sine A sine B. And tan A plus B is equal to tan A plus tan B divided by one minus tan A times by tan B. Looking at sine first of all, to get the double angle formula for sine, we just let B equal A. And that gives us sine A plus A is equal to sine A cos A plus cos A sine A. Um, that gives us on the left-hand side the sine of 2a, that's what they mean by the double angle, sine of 2a, is equal to 2 sine a cos a. Both of these two terms here are sine a cos a. Then we do the same thing for cosine. Again, we let b equal a, and that gives us cos a plus a is equal to cos a cos a minus sine a sine a. And tidying that up gives us the cosine of 2a is equal to cos squared a minus sine squared a. Now this particular formula is the most important of the three and it is used a great deal in uh, pure mathematics later on when we do integration and you have to integrate cos squared or sine squared. And for that reason, it has two other versions which are the versions which are more commonly used later on. We can change cos squared a into one minus sine squared a using cos squared plus sine squared equals one. So the second version is doing that, rewriting cos squared as one minus sine squared, then tidying that up to get cos 2a is equal to one minus two sine squared a. And the third version is doing the same thing, but changing sine squared into one minus cos squared a, which will give us cos 2a is equal to that. And tidying that up gives us cos 2a is also equal to two cos squared a minus one. So three versions for this particular formula. Depending on the question, you'll need to choose which of these three versions is the easiest and best one to use. Tan isn't used so frequently, but you are supposed to know it. So tan A plus B, same method. We let B equal A, and that gives us the tangent of A plus A is tan A plus tan A over one minus tan A times by tan A, which tidies up to give us the tangent of two A is equal to two times the tangent of a over one minus the tangent squared of a. Okay, well I'll leave these three up here for you, the three double angle formulae so you can refer to them. And we'll have a go at the first example. Use the double angle formulae to write the following as a single trigonometric ratio. Cos squared 25 minus sine squared 25, two tan 40 divided by one minus tan squared 40, and 6 sine pi by 6 divided by sec pi by 6. When they say write it as a single trigonometric ratio, what they mean is write the answer just as cos something, or sine something, or tan something, but just one trigonometric ratio. They're all very... ...immediately substituting into the three double angle formulae. Anyway, I'll let you have a go yourselves first. So pause the video and then come back to me again when you're ready. Okay, let's have a look at these together. So first of all, cos squared 25 minus sine squared 25, which is extremely similar to the first form for cos 2a, which is the cos squared a minus sine squared a is equal to cos 2a. We can immediately say, that means that cos squared 25 minus sine squared 25 will have to double A to get 2A, so that will equal cos 50. And that's all they wanted you to do. That is the answer. The second question, 2 tan 40 divided by minus 1 tan squared 40. Um, obviously, we're going to be using the double angle formula for tan, which is that 2 tan A of 1 minus tan squared A is equal to the tangent of A plus A, or tan 2A. And substituting in what we have, which is 2 tan 40 over 1 minus tan squared 40, that'll give us the tangent of A plus A, or the tangent of 2A. And again, that is the answer. That is all they're wanting you to do. So tangent of 80 degrees is the answer. Third question requires a little bit more work. 
primarily because of this sec on the bottom. And at the moment, this does not look like any of the three double angle formulae. So clearly a little bit of work is going to have to be done until it does look like one of these formulae. The most obvious thing to work with is the sec, because we know that sec is equal to 1 over cos. So 1 over sec will be 1 over 1 over cos, which means we just get that is equal to 6 sine theta, and the 1 over sec becomes cos pi by 6. Once we've done that, it immediately looks like the double angle formula for sine. So that's the one we'll be using. 2 sine a cos a is equal to the sine of 2a. And again, that means that 6 sine pi by 6 cos pi by 6, which is what we have, we're going to have to divide the 6 by 2 to get 3. And we're going to have to double pi by 6, which gives us pi by 3. So that will equal 3 sine pi by 3. Okay, example number two. Different sort of example, this one. Uh, the question says, given that x is equal to 3 cos a and y is equal to 2 minus 5 cos 2a, eliminate a and then express y in terms of x. That means you're trying to bring these two equations together and end up with one single equation where you'll have y on the left-hand side and some function of x on the right-hand side. I've left the uh, double angle formula for cos 2a up there. Cos 2a is equal to 2 cos squared a minus 1 because that is the one that you'll be needing to use in this example. A bit more fiddly, but I'll let you have a go yourself first. Pause the video, try it, and then come back to me when you're ready. Okay, let's have a look at this. I think there's probably more than one way to do this particular question, but I think that the easiest way is to rearrange these two equations. So rearranging the first one to get cos A on its own. Cos A is equal to x over 3, if I rearrange that. Slightly more fiddly to rearrange is the second one, but rearranging that will give us cos 2a is equal to 2 minus y divided by 5. And the reason for doing that is we can then use the double angle formulae for cos 2a and just substitute in. So cos 2a is this expression on the right-hand side, 2 minus y over 5, and cos a is x over 3. Substituting both of those in eliminates a from the equations. So substituting them into that gives us 2 minus y over 5 is equal to 2 into x over 3 squared minus 1. That's the important part of this question, working out that that's the most sensible thing to do. From here on, it's just straightforward algebra. Rearranging this to make y the subject of the formula and get everything else on the other side. I think I'd probably times by 5, first of all, which gives us 2 minus y is equal to 10 into x over 3 squared minus 5. And then putting the y on the other side, move everything else to the left-hand side, gets us to the answer. So y in terms of x is y equals 7 minus 10 times by x over 3, all squared. Okay, that gets us to example 3. Example three, I've written all three double formula up there because I think we will need all three of them. Given that A is an acute angle, and that's important, that A is acute, and that tan A is equal to a half, evaluate the following things. First of all, the tangent of 2A. Secondly, the sine of 2A. And then last of all, the sec of 2A. Now, I will let you have a go at this yourself first. But what I will say is that the first thing I'll be doing is because A is an acute angle, it's easy just to sketch a right angle triangle where A is acute, put in tan A as a half, one and two on the two relevant sides. You can work out the third side and you can immediately work out sine A and cos A. And you can do that because A is acute. If A is bigger than 90 degrees, then it's slightly harder work. Anyway, I'll let you have a go yourself first. Pause the video, and then when you're ready, come back to me. 
Okay, let's have a look at this. Uh, and I said before I even started answering the questions, what I'd probably do is work out what sine A and cos A are, because I know I'm going to need them at some point doing these questions. So tan A is a half. That means if we sketch a right angle triangle, then the opposite side will be one, the adjacent side will be two. And using Pythagoras, I can work out the hypotenuse, which must be the square root of two squared plus one squared, which is root five. Having done that, I can now work out that sine A is opposite over hypotenuse, one over root five, and cos A is adjacent over hypotenuse, two over root five. It's always worthwhile doing that when they tell you you have an acute angle. As I say, if A isn't acute, you need to take a little bit more care. Now, the first question, tan 2A. Tan 2A doesn't actually need anything that we just did. To work out tan 2a, we can just go straight to the double angle formula for tan 2a, which is that it's equal to 2 tan a over 1 minus tan squared a. And they've told us that tan a is a half. We can substitute that in and get to the answer straight away. So that'll equal 2 times a half over 1 minus a half squared. A little bit of fraction work and calculator work. That'll give you 1 divided by 3 quarters, which is 4 divided by 3. That's the answer to part 1. Part two asks us to work out the sine of 2a, and that's where the work where we did, which we did earlier on becomes useful. So sine 2a using the double angle formula is 2 sine a times by cos a. Well, we just worked out sine a and cos a. Sine a was 1 over root 5 and cos a was 2 over root 5. Just substituting those in will give us sine 2a is equal to 2 times 1 over root 5 times 2 over root 5. Tidying that up with the calculator gives us sine 2a equals 4 fifths, 4 over 5. And the last question, sec 2a. Well, the moment you see sec, immediately you should be thinking, I need to change that into 1 over cos. So sec 2a is the same thing as 1 over cos 2a. And I'll be using this identity. The cos 2a is equal to cos squared a minus sine squared a. And again, we've worked out cos A and sine A, we can just substitute those in. So sine A is 1 over root 5, cos A is 2 over root 5. Substituting those into the identity gives us cos 2A is equal to 2 over root 5 squared minus 1 over root 5 squared. From here on, uh, a little bit of calculator work, tidying all of that up, which gives us 4 fifths minus 1 fifth, which is 3 fifths. And going back to what we actually had to do, which was sec 2a. Sec 2a is 1 divided by cos 2a, so it's 1 divided by this, which turns the fraction upside down and gives us 5 thirds. And that's the last answer. That brings us to the end of this lesson. If you have the textbook, then turn to page 79 and have a go at exercise 4c. Thank you very much for listening and cheerio.